Hello and welcome to Windsloop Academy. This is the introduction to cybersecurity, viruses and malware. So, types of malware. There are many types of malware and viruses is one of them. So viruses is included in this overall term called malware. In this lecture we will look at viruses, crypto malware and ransomware, rootkit, trojan horses, worms, keyloggers, bots, botnets, spyware and adware. There are more types but these are the most popular in these days and the ones that we are getting attacked with the most. So, virus. A virus is a program that is intended to damage your computer system and most of us have at some time tried that our antivirus application, which I hope all of you have installed, pops up and say we just blocked the virus or you are in danger or something like that. And that is probably because a virus has tried to execute something on your computer. But there are different types of viruses. There are the companion virus, which is dependent on another application or file folder on your system, where it will either use this or it will try to create another program program that will try to execute and pretend to be something that is known by your system. Then we have the macroviruses, which make use of macros in applications. These are typically the viruses that try to exploit uh, the Office suit from Microsoft, so Word and Excel and PowerPoint. This is most likely the ones that are being used to attack companies because they know that almost every employee at a company has the Microsoft Office suit installed and they are therefore easily to target with these uh, macroviruses. So if you at some time get a mail looking malicious with a file, either a Word file or Excel file or something, and when you open it, it comes up with a warning or something there where it wants you to click OK or Yes, then don't do it because it's probably trying to make you uh, provide the access it needs to execute the malicious job that it has been coded to do. Then we have the multi-part uh, virus which has more than one way of attacking. This means that if the main way is either blocked or already patched on your system, it will try to use another way to damage your system. Then we have the polymorphic virus, which is viruses that try to change or mutate from target to target. This is done in order to avoid detection by antivirus applications, because most antivirus applications make use of hash values. So if it stays exactly the same, it will have the same hash value on all systems. So whenever an antivirus company adds a given hash value for this virus to their database of known viruses, then it will get flagged next time it enters a system which has this antivirus installed. Uh, this can be done by trying to encrypt some part of the application from time to time and thereby hide the behind a, a new hash value. Then we have the crypto malware and ransomware. This is most likely the most popular in recent years and we have heard a lot about these in the news where companies or governments or infrastructure gets attacked and all their systems are encrypted and nobody is able to access files or do anything. These are very dangerous because once a ransomware hit a system and the system gets encrypted, you either have to be very very lucky that the uh, programmers who made the code made a mistake, meaning that experts are capable of decrypting it without the actual code, or else there is no other choice than either to pay for them to decrypt your systems or simply just say bad luck and then buy a new computer and then if you don't have backups your files are lost. Some of the most popular examples are CryptoLogger, WannaCry and NotPager. So you need to stay very aware of these and have some kind of protection um, in place. Most newer antivirus due to the popularity of these has implemented the features of selecting different parts of your system as being uh, locked down for changes so whenever something is trying to change uh, within these folders or that part of your system you will get a warning about it and you need to physically allow it. Then we have the rootkits. This is software that tries to 
obtain administrator or root access on your system. So when you are administrator or root on a system, you have every privilege possible. This means that if this root can succeed, it can do everything on your system. There is nothing blocking it because the administrator or root has the overall control of a system and it will thereby have the same uh, privileges as you have or if you are uh, in, in a company or not owning the system then it might have more privileges than you actually have uh, so we need to stay aware of these as well then we have the Trojan horses which uh, have their name after the Greek mythology where a wooden horse were used to invade the city of Troy so they made a wooden horse and then they got the people of Troy to take it inside the city and then at night there were hidden soldiers within this large wooden horse they jumped out and opened the gate and the city got invaded so this is similar in IT when talking about Trojan horses this is malicious code or applications that either look legitimate or is included within legitimate applications so when you found a download source on the internet of an application that you want and you can see that oh this is this very nice application and the reviews ha are very good and you know that millions of people are using it but that particular installation file or file that you found might contain more than just that application it might contain some malicious code as well sometimes the creators are not even aware of this we have seen examples where criminals or hackers have been able to get access to the server of the company who distributed the software and then switched the file out without the company uh, noti noting, notify <laughs> without getting notified by the company meaning that even though you downloaded it from the real legitimate side of the company you still got this malicious code installed so this is a really tricky one but compared to viruses trojans tend not to replicate themselves they really just try to do the damage that they are programmed to on the system that they get access to. Then we have the worms. Worms use networks to replicate and copy themselves. So when you get a worm on your system, you can count on that it will try to replicate to all systems within your local network or through the internet. We have seen example of this on Facebook multiple times where some friend of yours might have been written to you in a foreign language or in some strange manner and then have included a link and that is typically because he got hit by a worm or some of his friends got hit by a worm and then he accidentally clicked the link so now it is spreading to all his friends and if you click the link it will spread to all your friends as well if they click the link of course worms can also be used in cyber warfare which is we have seen successful um, cases off and this is documented in the zero days uh, docu documentary um, where two nations are trying to stop the Iranian nuclear program so this is really cyber warfare on a very high level and I recommend you to watch this if you're interested in cyber warfare or worms in general because when some of the most bright some of the brightest people in this industry gets together and do something they can really do a lot of damage and it is really scary to see how much they were capable of but worms can also spread as mentioned by social media but it typically use exploits or vulnerabilities on a given system so it is important that you try to patch your system or install download updates whenever possible because it might be a patch or update that uh, close uh, vulnerability or exploit that is found by hackers. Then we have key loggers and keystroke loggers. This is either software based or hardware based. It is when a uh, software or device is trying to track all the input that you give. So, for example, keystrokes when you are uh, clicking the keyboard or the mouse activity you do or try to record the screen, and then it will either store it in a local file for later access or it will send or broadcast it directly to the hackers behind uh, the application. The reason why it is both uh, application and device is because in most cases it is an application that you got into your 
computer, for example through a Trojan horse, or it can be when someone get access to your computer physically, for example in a company, if some hacker get access and simply enter a USB stick, for example if the building at night is getting clean, then he gets in, nobody is there, he enter the USB, he leaves, and then you come to work the next day, you enter all the credentials and passwords and maybe check your bank information and account, and then the next night he comes back and take the USB and then he have whatever you have typed throughout the day. So these are very dangerous as well. And keyloggers are a form of spyware, but we'll get into that later. Then we have the bots and the botnets. A single bot is a computer that has get some uh, malicious code or software uh, installed such that the computer are now under the control of someone else and this is happening, happening remotely. We also see bots when for example Google is going through all the web pages trying to index them but whereas this is legitimate use then t typically when we hear about bots in the news it's for criminal activities. So if your computer get hit by this code and the hacker is capable of taking control of it, your computer become what is called a zombie. And if he does that multiple times and connect this, then he have a botnet. So a botnet is a network of compromised devices and we are seeing that some people have access to very large botnets, for example million of devices that are controlled by either single or multiple masters. And the reason why these are very dangerous is because the computer or device is doing the master bidding at all times. So if he at some point say, okay, now I want to attack this government site or this particular infrastructure or this company, then he tells all his million devices to do so and they will all hit the same target at the same time. And that is very dangerous and that is why we sometimes hear that large uh, websites or government sites are getting shut down because they can't handle the traffic that these botnets typically make which is called a DDoS attack. So at last we have the spyware and adware. Spyware and adware is as we mentioned before with keyloggers where some application or malicious code is trying to spy on you and the activities that you does. Either to use this for economic gains or to get as much information on you in order to sell it to advertising companies or to run advertisers uh, by themselves, meaning that it will try to get to know you and get as much info as possible to present the most correct advertisements for you such that you will click them and then they will have uh, economic gain out of it. So this was the type of malware that we are going to cover in this lecture. Remember to like and subscribe and then I will see you next time here on Winslow Academy.